this race, and uh, who's to know what else is to come for them? On the he's, restart, he's gonna the one of the craftiest belongs. men in this business. As you know, Ricky Rod in first, Lamonte is in second. Terry Lamonte running in second. Ricky Rudd on the point as they go down. Harry Gant running in third. Whittington is in fourth, but Baker is breaking upside, trying to move through. So our camera car now lying in second spot as they go around turn two to come down onto the back straight. Following Ricky Rudd, one of the youngest men in this race. He's only 24 years old, rookie of the year in 1977. And uh, with a new strong team, the Diegard team, which uh, Darrell Walton left last year, this could be Ricky Rudd's best year yet. Fact, Number 44, Terry Lavani of Corpus Christi, Texas. His dad got him started in racing. Let's go to Brock Yates. Ken, I'm with Junior Johnson. He can talk now. Junior, have you got your problems sorted out now? Well, we got just a little bit of an oil leak somewhere now that's dropped on the dog box. Smoking a little bit, but it ain't leaking out for any car, so it's just a seat somewhere or another. Uh, we don't think it's no major problem with it. Okay, thank you. Believe it or not, Ken, it's so loud down here, I couldn't hear a word he said, but I presume you know what he's talking about. Back to you. They think they can get along with the problem. But right now, problems for Ricky Rudd is Terry Labonte in car number 44 moves in on his rear bumper. And back into third spot goes car number 28. This is going to give us some sort of clue as to just how fast Bobby Allison's car really is, because he was back in sixth. And he's already up to third, and it just depends how quick he can cover that gap. Kelly Arbor away in the back of that flock as they come around to complete the 27th lap. Yarborough is running about 13th in that field. Gillison going to do the 1968 77 champion. And there you get a feeling for the tremendous speed these 3,700 pound racing cars are dealing with. Back they go in the back straightaway. Terry Labonte drafting right behind Ricky Rudd as they go into turn three. You have it. Earlier, we talked to Kelly Arborough in 27, as he has his work cut out for him, starting back in 29th position. Prior to the start of today's race, he talked about the frustration so far back. I feel like I should be there, but I can't get there. But, uh, you know, I'll say again, maybe things will work better during the race, but... Uh, it's, uh, it's kind of disappointing to, to have to sit back. Uh, you don't like to sit there. You like to be up front. And, of course, if things work good, that's where we'll go if at all possible. Well, there you see number 27 going down out of the back second turn into the back straightaway. He is running in 12th position and attacking Benny Parsons for the 11th. Meanwhile, in front, there goes Bobby Allison down beneath Terry Labonte. He pulls up on 88 and takes a shot at him. Bobby Allison going back for the front position another time. Well, that must be pretty discouraging, actually, for the others, because he really caught up very fast. He's not by. But you'll notice that he can run well very low. Everybody else is having to take the high line around here. Bobby Allison seems to be able to put that car where he wants. And Benny Parsons is drawn into the pits. Number 15, the Bud Moore car, which won here for Bobby Allison, is now on pit road, and uh, the Whittington car is on pit road. Let's go to Ned Jarrett. Ken, one of the cars that started way back there with Cale Yarborough was Harry Gant, and before the caution, he was one of the fastest cars on the track. He's now in that battle for the fifth position out there. Bob Johnson, the crew chief on the car, is standing by. Bob, you must be pleased with the way that car was running out there. Yeah, we're real happy today. We had a share of problems at the beginning of the week. Harry just said it was a little loose before the shallow, and I guess I tightened it a little too much, but we can straighten it out, I hope. Is he saying that it's too tight now? Yeah, a little bit. And he's doing a good job of drafting, Ken, and Harry Gant has become a master at that technique. A broken windshield on car number 93, Don Whittington. Put him on pit road, and he's just coming back on the track now. Whittington out of Florida as he worked the 30th of 200 laps. They're also reporting a windshield on car one is beginning to break. Buddy Baker has a hole in his windshield on car number one. That will certainly disturb the aerodynamics on the Haas Ellington car. Certainly disturb the aerodynamics around your helmet, too. It's not very pleasant to have a broken windscreen. That's a shame for Don Whittington, who was putting on a pretty good show there for a, a relative rookie to this extremely dodgy drafting procedure. There's Buddy Baker, car number one, being closely followed by Richard Petty, 43 car that we all know pretty well by now. 
Scotty Baker is one in six. The lead car draft picking up to a, a like a nine and ten car draft. Dale Earnhardt just trailing behind Richard. Maybe there we have catching up on it. We have another broken windshield. Number 17, Glenn Jarrett's windshield is broken. Once again, you're with Terry Lamonti in car number 44. He is running in fourth position. There he is, right up there, the leaders waving. See the sign that says, hi, Justin? That's for his one-week-old son, who is back in Texas watching this race today. You can put all sorts of messages on that, <laughs> can you? Please send help, refreshments, or anything else. You can see his rev counter there, glued at just over between 7,000 and 8,000 RPM. 8,000 being the last figure there, and it's running at about, what, 7,600 RPM. And our camera can zoom right in on him. How's that for a 190 mile per hour ride? And you can see that as he goes into that corner, he loses about 500 RPM. Now, that's not because he's lifting off. That's just tire scrub as these cars go into the turn. Well, you're right there with the leader, number 44, Terry Labonte, who's running with the leaders in fourth place. And now we're looking out the back. Whoa, look at that man right up on That's him. That's Bernie Baker. Right behind him and right behind him is Richard Petty. He pulls away a bit as he goes into turn four. Now let's see if uh, Buddy can catch him up in the draft. They go down onto the trio. Oh, sorry, the back straight. Here's Baker pulling up. Baker right up on the rear bumper. And you can see the hole in Baker's windshield. A little break up here for just a moment. Back with the leaders, Bobby Allison, 28, still has command. Bonnet is in the second position. There's the number one car that's having a problem in our camera car, number 44, right in front of him. Number 47, Gant is back on pit road. Bobby Allison in front. There's Gant. He is a tremendous driver, cut his teeth in the modified ranks of NASCAR, and that Race Hill Farms car from Connecticut doing proud for a while, but now having problems. We will continue with more live coverage of the Daytona 500 after this word from your local station. Thirty-four laps are complete in the 23rd Daytona 500, 85 miles down, 415 to go. Harry Gant pitted, came back on the track. He is pitting again under green as the folks in the grandstand. Looks like a tennis match watching these guys go by at 190 miles per hour. There's a little more at stake than a ball and so forth than this one. Nearly as much money, too. Almost. At least they're willing to race for consolation. On the back straightaway, in the front running position is Bobby Allison. In second is Neil Bonnet, maintaining the third in a very stout trap. Here comes Bonnet to the inside. Parsons in third. Tremendous race for the lead going into turn number three. Almost side by side. Bonnet then had to fall back. Well, Bonnet made a real stab at the lead there. Well, there we see the two good Fords out here. Neil Bonnet, number 21, and Benny Parsons, number 15. But unfortunately, Benny is a lap down. But he's right in there with his lead car draft. So what he needs now is to get right to the front, have a yellow flag situation, cross the line first, and that will give him his lap back. Terry Labonte with Baker right on his rear bumper. Now Baker's pulling up and trying to pass. You're riding with Terry Labonte, and Baker is right there trying to storm through. There you see Richard Petty right behind Baker now going to the outside. There you see the Buddy Baker's wind speed right up to the back of Terry Labonte down the inside. He's pulling alongside. He's shooting through to go by. Up in front. So Buddy Baker takes Bonnet has taken the lead. So Buddy takes fourth spot away from Labonte. Let's go to Harry Gantz pits. Harry Gant has been in the pits, Ken, for more than a lap now. He has ignition problems on his car number 47. He was one of the fastest cars out there charging to the front. The crew said all of a sudden it started misfiring. They brought him in. He went back out, only made a lap, and now they're changing distributor of the car. So he's losing a lot of valuable time here. I can't imagine what it must be like to be in a race and lose time. It must be very frustrating. The old lap charters keeping very careful track. 